Welcome back to another episode of The Catholic Buzz. We're so happy every time you join us uh, as we're continuing the co Catholic conversation here uh, with uh, all of our Catholic experts that are joining uh, me here <laughs> on this panel. Of course, Josh Sullivan and Matt Van Milligan. My name is Father Daniele, and welcome uh, to you guys. Hey, it's good to see you again. Another week has passed by. Did you buy your smile cookie last week? Of course. Yeah, of yeah. course. Um, I didn't, so I, I, I made my wife because I, I don't really go into town. That's very right. Often, Good but, thing uh, I gave you one at church yeah. on Sunday. <laughs> eh? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 w I bought them and then gave them away to co. co Colleagues, 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 yeah. co co workers. Uh, that's colleagues. what I was going for. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say COVID. Yeah. I didn't know what you were. I didn't know where you were going. Yeah. with that. And, and I say made my wife, but uh, she doesn't need much persuasion to buy a cookie. To buy the cookies. <laughs> okay, we're very close to the birth of your child. By the way, I, I don't know. We haven't talked about that in a while yeah. because uh, almost in ten days is the due date. Down to the wire. Yeah. 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 So congrats. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you'll get called away during this broadcast. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's uh <laughs> if, if all of a sudden your if all of a sudden your image freezes, it means his phone froze. <laughs> it's exactly. being called, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. getting to that point where we're making a, con a contingency plan every time I leave the house or every time <laughs> um, I do actually leave the house. Um, that uh, you know, it, in the case that this starts soon, what's what's our plan? Yeah. yeah. That's so exciting. That's, that'll yeah. be your fourth child, yeah. uh, fourth boy, yeah. right? Wow. And any names? Can you tell us what well, uh, names? Too many names yeah. this late in the game. But yeah, uh, yeah we, always, we always end up deciding. Is it like you, so for me, we used to, uh, we had names all picked out and then it ended up being something totally different than what, like, you know, the name, the name, we, we picked up the baby, we held the baby, and we're like, oh, this is the name for the baby. This is, so for me, my oldest son was Zachariah. Zachariah wasn't in the list of top, top 10 boy names that we had, but when we both looked, I looked at him and I said, oh, he's a Zachariah. Yeah. And my wife, she, she said to me, she's holding him, she's like, I think his name is Zachariah. He's supposed to be a Zachariah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I looked at him and I was like, that's funny because that's exactly what I was thinking, but I didn't want to say anything because mm -hmm. it wasn't in the top 10 list of names. So, but for most of our babies, so now by the, like, the end of it, <laughs> we were like, yeah, we don't, we're not even thinking about baby names at this point. We'll figure it out when they're born. But then four hours after, we're, we're, we're leaving the hospital and we're like, okay, oh, uh, we, we got to sign the papers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you have to leave a name. Joe, here. Joe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we usually have a, a pretty long list of names, you know, leading into the event and we kind of narrow it a little bit beforehand, but usually it, uh, we, we have a look at them and yeah, yeah, that, that kind of, it comes from there though. Like, the have name, your yeah. kids names all been on that list before? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they they always come from the list, but we don't decide until we meet them. Yeah. yeah. Feel free to name your newborn after uncle Josh or uncle Daniele. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with middle names. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, I'll give you permission. That would be, uh, it'd be funny. An Italian name like Daniele, Right? With Van Milligan. I don't know if that's going to work. That's a, there's a, that's a lot of eyes. That's a lot of eyes. Yeah. A, lot of yeah. eyes. a lot of vowels. Yeah. A lot of vowels there. Uh, yeah. So uh, moving on from that, we wish uh, Teresa Marie well and you, uh, as you expect your child. Yeah. But uh, flipping the corner here, flipping the page, I guess, uh, some strange news from the Catholic world in Ontario this week. Um, yeah. There was, or I guess maybe it's been a more than a week, a little bit since it's happened. Uh, but there was the cathedral in St. Catherine's uh, diocese, the cathedral. Someone broke into the cathedral at night and stole the tabernacle yeah. from the church. Now, that's crazy to Isn't me, that? but was it the only thing that was kind of... Like, they break in, I understand, breaking into a church. That mm -hmm. happens bef in other places, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but, like, they didn't wreck the church or set it on fire. They, they No, as just... far as I know, uh, as far as what I've read... Um, just the tabernacle. It, the, now, scary. the priest in the article had said that he thinks it had been sized up before. Yeah. Like they came and took a little tour around the church. Um, because, you know, the tabernacles are, yeah. are gold-plated. People think probably that they're a big chunk of gold. You know, yeah, this yeah. false thing that people believe the church, every church has lots of money, money or whatever. <laughs> right? Trust me, as a pastor, I know that's not true. Uh, but <laughs> uh, it's gold-plated. Yeah. You know, what's precious to us is the contents of the tabernacle. That's and right. that was the concern. They stole the tabernacle, which was very heavy. There's surveillance video of them pushing the tabernacle in a grocery cart outside of the oh, church. Wow. And then a few days later, they did find the tabernacle 
in like this muddy river, muddy creek. And, and the contents of the tabernacle, so the Blessed Sacrament, was nowhere to be found. So the, a the door point. of the tabernacle was found. I think they're fixing it up right now. But the Diocese of St. Catharines has said that uh, best case scenario, the Eucharist was sort of dumped into the water, I guess, where it can dissolve, right? right. That's, That's the best case scenario. Best case scenario. <clears throat> I, well, so. Something we don't talk a lot about, maybe we'll talk about in a future episode of the Catholic Blessed and stuff, but like satanic and, uh, rituals, Mm -hmm. uh, and the occult, they, they actually focus on Catholicism and Catholic, uh, the Eucharist that comes from a Catholic church. It's not just any yeah. um, bread yeah. from a Christian church. It is the Catholic Eucharist, mm -hmm. Roman Catholic, or it doesn't have to be Roman Catholic, but normally it's, it's Catholic. And, and they break in and they try to steal the Eucharist from the church. That kind of goes to show you something, right? I mean, like out of anything, if, if we as Catholics, unfortunately, don't always believe, there's surveys that show that, you know, not all Catholics believe that it's the true presence of Christ. Our enemies, yeah. I mean, I, I claim them as our enemies, but the sat sat satanic and occultists, they do, they do believe. Yeah, I know. They believe 100%. Like, they, they broke into this church and the only thing they stole was the tabernacle. Yeah. That just, I mean, that's Yeah, scary. they don't know if it's attached to a satanic uh, ritual. They don't know, not, yeah. They, don't, they, they stole they this know. big heavy thing they thought that would be, maybe that's where they keep all the gold from the offertory. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, yeah. how well knowledgeable yeah. are they in Catholic tradition? But Exactly. Yeah. But, it, I mean, it, it's scary to, to believe that that happens. I mean, I know that we, we teach Eucharistic ministers not, like, to watch for someone trying to steal the Eucharist. Yeah, and that's why recently, I guess that is a topic for another episode, that's recently we've cracked down on who takes the Eucharist from our churches, you know, people who come up with the picks yeah. and put the Eucharist uh, to take home. We need to know who you are, where you're bringing it. Uh, you need to have, you know, yeah. no one Some can credit just, if, credentials. If we don't know you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think, you know, it's long overdue that, that that's been done. Uh, but uh, also, that's in St. Catherine's Diocese in, in southern Ontario. But here, it was very quiet in the news. But this past summer in Manitoulin Island, in our own diocese of Sault Ste. Marie, church, yeah. a church was busted in, uh, uh, trashed, and set on fire. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the oldest church, one of the oldest churches in our diocese. And uh, I think in so northern they're Ontario, still I heard too, sizing right? up the damage there. But we'll get carried away. I think we've yeah. got a little <laughs> carried away here. Because today's episode is part two of our series on the Mass. Last week we had a good conversation about the Mass and why it's important, the history of it. So I'm gonna propose this week that we sort of break down the Mass yeah. into, let's talk about the first part of the Mass. I don't know if people know, but uh, there, are, there are parts of the Mass. You know, there's, uh, technically I guess there's four parts of the Mass. There's the introduction, the Liturgy of the Word, the Liturgy of the Eucharist, and the conclusion of the Mass. We're going to look at the uh, beginning. First, We're going to yeah, look at the, the, the welcome, the greeting, the introduction, and the Liturgy of the Word today. Break it down so that people can really understand. Because there's lots that happen. In the lots mass. that happen in that first part of the Mass. Okay, mm -hmm. so last week we were talking about how it's important for the uh, Christian community to gather. That's the first thing we do. We all start to head to the church together. Remember, we used to ring the bells, bing, yeah. you know? And uh, <laughs> that was the cue for people to leave their house and start heading to the church, you know? So some churches don't ring their bells anymore, some for structural issues, some for yeah. uh, <laughs> other issues, right? Um, but, th but that gathering right away is important, right? The, the Christian community coming together, I think, would be the first real non-official part of the Mass. And there are times people don't realize, too, that music, too, I mean, we could have a whole other episode based on music in the Mass, but music plays a very significant role in the Mass. The very first thing that happens when mm -hmm. we start Mass, people get together in, but we sing that first song. Yeah. And there's actually direction. So you, you will normally always sing an entrance hymn, yeah. uh, except for Good Friday or, or certain times. But if you're singing Mass songs, the entrance hymn is, is sung as well as communion hymn. Those are the two songs in a mass that have to be sung. So the very first thing that happens is the mass is the, is the, is the entrance hymn. And that entrance hymn, there's antiphon that would normally go off of based on a daily, daily thing. However, in the liturgical um, music direction, it says that it has to be a song that people know. 
Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be giving adoration and worship to God. And so there are two things that, that come out of that. So if you're going to introduce a new song into Mass, normally you're going to see it during, done during offertory or in the closing hymn because those two Mass parts don't need to be done necessarily. Right. And so, yeah, that first song is, is actually meant <clears throat> to gather people in together, singing community together, worshiping God, like put the focus there. And really start, you know, like the Mass is something that we are supposed to be active participants in. Yeah. Right from the beginning of the, of the entrance song, we're to be participating, yeah. right? You know, it's to, it's to get us motivated. This is not just something that's happening around us, but it's something that we're invested in, that we're participating in. And we stand while we do it too. Yeah, right? and, <laughs> and just before that, that part, I do want to mention that before Mass begins, yeah. before that entrance song, it is appropriate, you know, when the community gathers and everyone's like, hey, Matt, how are you? Blah, blah, nice to see you. It's exciting for you to see your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, at the church. Sometimes you only see them once a week. But for a few minutes before Mass starts, we should take a moment of silence to really prepare our hearts, to offer our prayers, to, make, to put our mind in, this, in the right frame of mind, you know. Uh, and then, yes, the community is called to stand together and now we have our entrance hymn. And, and to sing. I think that's something that and a lot of sing. Catholics forget. Yeah. Uh, but I love, I love our, our uh, St. Alphonse is where I do music. Um, and I love hearing, I can tell when it's a good song, when they all know it really well and everything else, because I can hear them overpowering. Uh, like the sound of music just comes from yeah. the people. I love that. It gives me so much uh, energy as a music as a music. So as yeah. that's happening, you'll see a procession of, of certain ministers coming into the church, right? So usually you'll see uh, the altar servers, uh, the deacon, and the priest uh, come into in procession. And it normally comes from the back of the people too, right? That's is right. Is that important? Or I don't know. I was, I'm asking. Well, it is, a, it is a procession into the church building, up into the sanctuary, right? Yeah. Uh, if it's prescribed from the back of the church or not, uh, I don't know. Big deal? Okay. Uh, but I know it's important for the cross and the candles, if, if possible, to be processed in. The deacon carries the book of the Gospels because he is the minister of the Gospel. Uh, so he carries in the, the book of the Gospels, followed by the main celebrant of the, uh, of the Mass, the priest. Uh, there might be other priests there. There might be, you know, a large contingent of servers or there might be two deacons, depending on where your parish is. But those are the ministers that come up in procession. And then when they arrive in the sanctuary, what is it? Wh what do we notice about when they arrive into the sanctuary? They all genuflect? Yes. Yeah, so in, in... Well, depending on where you're from, I the, guess. Yeah. <laughs> so some churches have the tabernacle off to the side. Uh, they are to bow towards the altar, yes. right? If in a church where the tabernacle is center with uh, the main area, like our parish uh, yeah. churches, um, then we are to acknowledge right off the bat a genuflection, a kneel to the tabernacle. But after that genuflection, our focus is now on the altar. The altar is the main area of focus of the Mass, right? Because it's the altar of sacrifice. So you'll notice when the ministers go into the church, even after, they'll go and kiss yeah. The deacon and the priest will kiss the altar. Why are they kissing the altar? Same thing. It is the altar of sacrifice. And the priest stands in persona Christi Capitus, in the person of Christ, who is the person who will um, preside over this sacrifice of the Mass, in the person of Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. And so he kisses the altar uh, where that sacrifice is going to, as a, as a sign of reverence and a sign of respect. And also we know every altar has a relic, a relic of a saint. And uh, it's a first degree in, relic, right? Is that? Yeah, I yeah. believe so. It's a, a piece of a bone or a skull a versus a third, a like, like yeah. a piece of cloth that touched somebody somewhere. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. And, and so we, we honor that right off the bat before they take their place to begin. Yeah. So that's, that's the beginning of Mass. Yeah, yeah I don't know if uh, people... Realize that. Realize all that stuff, you know, because, and also we see things happen a lot, all the time, so it kind of gets away from us. And we did it last week, but the, that having that piece of bone inside the altar kind of goes back to, again, the catacombs and tradition and, you know what I mean? Like, they would say Mass over top of a fallen Christian's uh, tombstone. They would hide there. They would be saying Mass over top of, you know. True. So tradition kind of from last week. And it's also like reminds us that we are in a communion of saints. Yeah. yeah. We're, yeah. we're Catholic together with our brothers and sisters who are present in the church, with our brothers and sisters who have gone before us mm -hmm. as well, and with the saints in, in heaven, right? So it, it's, all, it's all connected. Can I ask you a question then, as a musician? Um, I always feel a little bit weird. Do we stop right away 
like, so is music supposed to be keep going? Or like, so sometimes I worry when we, we're playing the first song, if Priest and everybody gets up there first, they're standing there waiting um, for Mass to begin, and we go into another verse, because it's the verse of the song or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. What is the proper, is it, is it preference? Is it, because I was told one time, it, depending on the priest, I think, but one time I was told, you want to sing the whole song. Sing the whole song, sing mm -hmm. all the verses, sing all that, but then sometimes, you know, people are waiting and... Yeah, there's no proper time for no, the song to, to, to end. end. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sing for 20 minutes, uh, yeah. but uh, <laughs> in the Roman Missal, it does say when the entrance chant is concluded, yeah. the mass begins, the presider begins. So That's right. It doesn't say, like, when the, when the presider arrives to his chair, the music should stop. That's right. Uh, you know, there's no sort of definitive... Uh, but, but I again, remember what you said about the purpose of it. It's yes. to bring us into the liturgy. Yeah. So we shouldn't cut that short. No. Nor should we annoy people by bringing it, <laughs> Bring it right. too long. long. Doing you know? the seventh first of how great thou art. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. And I think coming back to what we were saying, I think last week about the difference between uh, like entertainment and participation. That's that right. it's if if you're a music leader, if, if you're not, if you don't have kind of those priorities, and you're just like, well, I'm going to keep going because this song has a That's really a sick good, bridge. Yeah. Like y you're not really you're not doing it for the right reasons. Going, That's a with great point. Music should bring all of us together to sing and worship. Yeah. Yeah. Right. In Instead of be a concert or a performance. or a performance by the musician. I love being a musician from the back of the church. I got to be honest with you because that way I'm in communion uh, with the people, singing behind them. Getting, but also I'm I can have great eye contact with the priest if something's mm -hmm. going on or if I need to watch for something or whatever without everybody else realizing it. Versus like if I'm standing beside on these and I've done mass from the side uh, before, but like the priest will look at like you have to turn the, and look at me to see if you know communicate. <laughs> uh, versus you know the other. But yeah. Okay, so next step. Okay, so then uh, remember the priest who's in persona Christi, in the person of Christ, uh, he welcomes the community. Oh, yeah, as the head of that um, gathering, the priest offers his, his, his greeting to the people gathered. So, our, and we always begin, like we begin every prayer or, or, or sacrament with the sign of our faith and the sign of the cross. So we mark ourselves as a reminder of who we are yeah. uh, with the sign of the cross. And then uh, the priest offers, you know, the, the Lord be with you. And if it's a bishop, he says, peace be with you. The bishop gives oh, yeah. uh, an offering of peace because he is a successor of the apostles, right? So he is part of that. Oh, interesting. He offers peace. I to haven't people. noticed that. Same response and yep. with your spirit. Uh, he, the priest may give a um, preview of the gospel or a little, um, you know, or he may just go right into the penitential rite. And this is important to talk about, yeah. the penitential rite, because it's a time, Matt, where we bring our venial sins, right? Yeah. And we offer them here at this moment. And one thing, uh, Matt, Matt will be good to explain this better than I can, but one thing, you know, I, I always, I've been to churches where I sit in the pew and the priest says, let us call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. And then he doesn't give you time then, to do that, yeah. right? It's just right in, right into whatever. But but that moment is for us to really pause and call to mind our sins. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, I touched on it a little bit last week, but talking about how the, the structure of the mass actually mirrors the structure of kind of uh, salvation history, or like the the narrative arc of salvation history. So, uh, beginning uh, in, in with the penitential rite is beginning in Genesis, is beginning in calling to mind our, uh, not only our, our specific sins, but like the, the, the nature of sin Original itself. Sin. The, the fact that we're, we, we are coming out of a world that is uh, in, in many ways given to sin. So having, giving a, a minute or uh, some time to, to reflect on that, to examine ourselves, to bring to mind our venial sins. Because cool. um, if we're properly preparing ourselves for the liturgy itself, that's that's part of it. We're participating in, um, yeah, the, the extension of, of the mass across time and and space, really. Right, and and that's to be clear. So, uh, venial sins, less serious sins, can be forgiven at that per, at that yeah. point during the mass, whereas mortal sins still have to be confessed. And uh, you shouldn't be receiving re re the Eucharist with mortal sins, right? That's right. Like that's that's the whole. But venial sins, you go through. Oh yeah, the priest says, "May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins." 
and bring us to everlasting life. It's a really powerful moment that I yeah. think sometimes we breeze right through because yeah. yeah. we're not paying attention and, and we're so used to that. But that, that moment, we're preparing ourselves uh, to make ourselves worthy to enter into what else is coming, to hear the word of God clearer and to receive Jesus. And, and we should still be attending mass if we're in a state of moral, moral sin, sin just because not receiving <clears throat> in many cases, um, it could be those venial sins that are keeping us from actually uh, identifying or admitting to um, kind of mortal sins that may be mm-hmm. blocking. That's a good call. Yeah. Good. yeah, that's yeah. great. So now during that time, is that the time where we go through our fault, through our fault, through our most grievous fault? Yeah, so you, I confess the so, confidier is what this, that's called. Yeah, yeah. and so what the, now there's a time now, I think it's getting to be more popular because we were talking about it like in 2011 when liturgy kind of changed a little bit to be more yeah. precise. Yeah. It specifically says in there, strike your breast. Yeah. Uh, right, and so uh, not everybody still does it, but now I'm noticing in the church community more and more that people are catching on if they've read it. And, oh yeah, yeah, and so. I think people are are seeing the priest. Uh, everyone looking at the priest, yeah. and so they see that, and so they're doing it as well. But well, you're right with what? the change of the Roman Missal. It does say, uh, uh, and striking their breast, they say, yeah, through my fault, fault through, through my, my fault. fault, through my most grievous fault. Some people will just strike once. Yeah. Some people will strike three, three times, times. With every time, time you say it. They say yeah. that comes from, uh, the, remember, mia culpa, mia, mia culpa. culpa. Yeah, yeah. Mia, yeah, mia grandissima culpa, yeah. Uh, but the, it's, it's really unclear whether we are still to do it three times or that's just what we remember from our tradition of the past, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we strike, uh, you know, right close to our heart that we are admitting our fault. We are admitting our unworthiness. Uh, right yeah. there during that time when we're we're asking God for mm-hmm. forgiveness. It's not it's not a time where I try to hurt yourself. <laughs> no, but but it's very tr- scriptural yeah. and and historical. People used to beat their breast, yeah. uh, sort of in shame. Yeah, eh? yeah, yeah. There, there was a, a physical expression of of shame, or that, yeah. like you, you have beating your breast, you have tearing your cloak, and, and yeah. some of the scripture references people put ash on their head. That yeah. there's a very wear sackcloth. Yeah, yeah, a very physical or like demonstrative kind of expression of of shame, yeah. rather than just and just, that's just where this that internal comes from. reflection. So beating your breast three times is to show your shame, like you're yeah. not admitting, but but being fully aware of, of our sinfulness. Of our sinfulness. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And we okay, talked about that last week, eh, how the Mass we celebrate today is like the Mass we've celebrated throughout. Th- throughout. Yeah, and so those years. traditions come. Th- there is a physical aspect of our of, of our sinfulness, right? So yeah, we... Yeah, yeah. strike your breast. I just, I just wanted to... Yeah, there was something that I was thinking about last Mass I was at, and I was thinking, oh, we have, like I was noticing that everybody was doing it in Mass. But that's good that you brought that up because it is not an option anymore. The, the, it, it says, the Roman yes, Missal says, it. we do it. We yeah. strike our breast. Yeah. Uh, you know, because some people... Oh, don't uh, some people don't do it because they think it's just uh, sort of a a weird uh, yeah a, a discipline a discipline <laughs> yeah. we talked about a couple of versus episodes a dogma ago. Yeah, exactly. or doctrine but but the liturgy tells us to strike yeah or it says and striking their breast they say yeah yeah and it because uh, uh, it gives direction um, to sort of bow at certain points too and yeah. traditionally we we kneel at certain points we bow and like we could talk about this at at numerous points throughout. Um, but people generally seem either uneasy by that or unfamiliar with that because um, we're not used to communicating with posture in a bunch of other contexts that we find ourselves in. In so, 2020. In 2020. Yeah. So it was like if you were, uh, if you lived in the Middle Ages and you had, you know, a, a lord or like you, you went to see a king or a queen or something, like you would... You, you know, bow up, and you, you, you have bow, specific you would, yeah. protocols for like ways that you communicate with your posture. But right now, church and specifically the mass are really one of the only contexts where you you have that. And um, yeah, in in the penitential rite, it, it takes on a significance when you're actually communicating with posture. Um, and yeah, as well as standing and kneeling and all the other sort of directions that you take from it. And I like how you mentioned that because uh, this is how I teach our young people who are making their uh, first communion and first reconciliation. Uh, First, we teach them uh, the gesture of blessing themselves with holy water pre-COVID times, right? Uh, And then when they prepare for the first Eucharist, we teach them about genuflection, that, that in any church you walk into, when you walk in the church, you are to acknowledge Jesus's presence in the tabernacle with a genuflection, with a by kneeling down, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And I think often people forget that they just go to their pew and have a seat. Uh, but we have to acknowledge in every church in the world the presence of Jesus in the tabernacle. Yeah. And and yeah, it would it would be like 
how we greet certain people. There is a certain way of greeting yeah. different various people in the world, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Whether it's a bow or a curtsy yeah. or a handshake well, pre-COVID times. Yeah, and, and in our context, mm -hmm. it, is, it really is something that has to be learned. Like if you're, exactly. if you're a guy, maybe you, you do that once when you take a knee to ask, and ask a girl to marry, or something like yeah. that, but like yeah. you do it that one time, you're communicating something That's with right. posture, but in, in a liturgical context, it's, it's pretty frequent. Yeah. yeah, you can always tell the Catholics when you walk into a movie theater, they genuflect. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's so true. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so the okay, next so thing, after we've had our sins right. forgiven, yeah. right? Uh, we, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. What do we do next? We praise God with the yeah. Gloria. We offer him our glory yeah. uh, because we've been forgiven of those uh, sins. And it's the day of the Lord, Sunday. We're, we're, we're worshiping God, we're praising Him. And so this is our song of rejoice, that we, gl we sing glory to God in the highest. Adoration and worship to God. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's the conclusion sort of of our uh, penitential, right? We've had our, our venial sins forgiven, and now we're giving thanks back to God for that, for that gift of forgiveness, of mercy. Now at that time too, so uh, you, people will notice probably that glory is not always done. So what are the times that Gloria is um, taken away from, like we don't do the Gloria during Lent or right. during Advent? Yes. Uh, normally, but normally on a Sunday it's done. Uh, so, yep. So right? yeah, because it is a, a song of worship and praise and glory, uh, we do it every Sunday. Yeah. Every Sunday is the, is the Lord's Day, except during, during Lent. Advent and Lent. And Lent. Yeah. Why? Because those are periods of time that are more penitential. And so we, we, those periods feel different, right? So uh, during Lent, for example, we don't say Alleluia. We don't pr uh, sing the Gloria. We have, uh, our, our, even our music is to be a little subdued uh, because it's more of a penitential, reflective period of time to prepare us for a greater glory, for, Easter. for a greater yeah, yeah. time of glory exactly. and a greater time of praise. And it is, it is, it does bring something from going to Mass all the time. I mean, if we say it's not entertainment, but as participating in the Mass, as we participate, it really does bring the Gloria, like Easter Vigil is one of my favorite times, is singing the Gloria. Mm -hmm. After on, not having it. After not having it for yeah. six weeks, seven weeks. Yeah, and I think I think that's the important thing to remember, that it's, it's an extension of the penitential attitude Th throughout Mass, but in anticipation of the great Gloria that comes yeah. at Easter. It's not this sort of like pathological self-effacement that we just kind of, you know, <laughs> right. endure, oh. you yeah. know, for the, the dark months of winter. It's, it's actually it, like all, all of our, um, our penitence is oriented towards the long yeah, game. That, that yeah. great Gloria at the end. True. Yeah. Uh, and I think it, it is it is a real song of joy, you know, like, uh, yeah. so yeah, I, I really like the, the Gloria as well, okay, and then... Uh, I can tell you that there yeah. hasn't been too many Glorias as a musician that are easy to play. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> they're, they're supposed to be joyful, so for some reason composers think joyful means lots of chord changes in lots of weird, impossible positions. But I'll let... <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Yeah, and, and <laughs> like the words of the Gloria are really are beautiful. And it, the, the, those change when the change to the Roman Missal came in 2011. Yeah. Um, and and I, I hate to use the word change when we talk about Roman Missal because uh, it was it was more going back to an say, authentic translation. Yeah, translated more correctly. Was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, at the time of Vatican II, um, where we were allowed to uh, move to the vernacular to, to offer Mass in our, in our local language, English in our case, uh, it was just such an exciting time for people that, that the translations came out fast. Yeah. And, and so the Roman Missal... Uh, in 2011 was correcting uh, to make the language, like we were saying last week, you know, the mass that has been celebrated for yeah. thou 2,000 years here. You can go back to that. go back to that authentic language that's been used this whole time. And, and language does matter. Yeah. Yeah. It does matter. We and talked about that with uh, Father Matt, was it, a couple weeks ago yeah. with, with, with his baptism and saying instead of we baptize you, it was I baptize yeah. you. And so, but words in the mass matter. You can't just change words. Exactly. <laughs> right? uh, yeah. But the, the words that, you know, glory to God in the highest, on earth peace to people of goodwill. Yeah. Peace to people of goodwill. You know, we're, we're offering praise to God, even for people who aren't, uh, let's say, Christian or practicing in their Catholic faith. If there are people of goodwill, we include them in our prayers. We include them. Uh, and then, you know, we praise you. We bless, bless you, you. We adore you. We, adore you, we, we glorify. glorify you. You know? We give you thanks. Yeah, yeah we give you thanks. Like, it's, it's a real beautiful uh, prayer. It's a be very beautiful 
time of praise to God. And again, when we are just so used to hearing it, used to singing it, we, it, it that kind of gets lost on us yeah. a little bit, right? Uh, but it is a real beautiful uh, prayer. Uh, and then after the Gloria is what's called the collect. And that's a fancy word for the opening prayer. <laughs> yeah. Mom, I need not, a call. Not collect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Not collect. Collect comes later when yeah. you give a little money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, collect uh, is the fancy word for the opening prayer. And the presider, remember again, in the person of Jesus, in the person in persona Christi, gathers the people together f to, to orient ourselves in prayer now as we begin and we're preparing to hear the word of God speak to us, right? Now that prayer is written out for you as a priest, right? You, yes. It's not something you just make up off the top. It's, no. it's there and it's there for the day, like the 24th Sunday of ordinary time. It's there for the specific day uh, that the mass is taking place. Yeah. yeah. On, that, on that note, we have three cycles of the Mass. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should maybe say that in the, the first episode, but like we have year A, year B, year C for the Mass. Those are for the readings. Yeah, for the yeah. readings and stuff. Does that happen with prayers too, or is it just always the 24th Sunday is this prayer? Yeah, the 24th Sunday is, is, is set in oh, a prayer. Yeah, okay, exactly. Uh, the cycle of readings is on a three-year uh, cycle. Yeah, it, matter, it matters to me as a musician when I'm doing the psalm. That's why it does matter, exactly. but it, like, yeah, I was wondering. Yeah, okay. and uh, we didn't get as far as we wanted to today when talking about the Mass, yeah. right? Uh, so I don't know, maybe we should leave the Liturgy of the Word for our next episode because we're, <laughs> we're out of time. We're out of time already. The I introduction. Know, we, we have a five-part series on the Mass. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to do a three-part series. It's going to be like a hundred parts series now yeah uh, but I, I think we talked about beautiful things today th that just our entrance into the mass before before we even get to the liturgy of the word remember next time that As we're gonna going to start with it. that three-year cycle yeah. uh, about the liturgy of the word right and we're gonna talk about why that matters uh, but there's beautiful things the community gathering together um, calling us together in in mind and heart uh, this this procession of the community coming in um, you know, the, the greeting from the, the presider, the, our asking forgiveness of sins and praising God with the glory. That's all beautiful things that we just sometimes skip over when we're so used to it. Yeah, it, it just kind of, it flies, you don't recognize it. Exactly, yeah. you don't recognize You're it. You're part of it, but you don't recognize it. And I think it, if we're really conscious of it, um, it makes our experience of mass that we are to be participating in fully yeah. uh, more beautiful and more efficacious as uh, the There's where I gotta look word. up. <laughs> yes, uh, that's funny. I forgot to tell you, Matt, that uh, people look for your like word of the day. Oh, I guess okay. someone said that you know Matt's word of the day was efficacious. Yeah, I, I didn't get a chance to say my word today, it, but uh, I'll save it for next time. We'll save it for next yep. time. Yeah. Uh, did you write it in permanent marker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't wash that arm. Okay. I was say, with COVID, it's the only way now. <laughs> so we're gonna continue our series on the mass. I I, I I like these discussions we're having, and I think it's really helpful for people. So we'll continue that on okay. the next episode uh by the next episode you might have another child yeah right so possible. that's exciting exciting keep us posted and we'll we'll have to show people a picture or something uh, on the next uh, episode yeah. of the Catholic <laughs> so if you have any uh comments uh, suggestions um send them to us by email if you have any well wishes for matt who's going to be a new dad soon <laughs> send, them, send them to us at the catholic buzz podcast at gmail.com and we're going to continue our series on the Mass in the next uh, couple episodes as well. So for Josh Sullivan and Matt Van Milligan, I'm Father Daniele, and we'll see you next time on The Catholic Buzz.